Hi class, welcome to Accounting 240. Today we're going to be talking about one of the main concepts of Chapter 16 that we need to make sure that you understand. Now in Chapter 16, this is a chapter where we're looking at the different costs and how they flow through a manufacturing process. Now, I want to use an example in this chapter of making a chair. Let's say it's just a simple wooden chair. So all that goes into it is the lumber, maybe you might paint it, maybe some nails, maybe some glue but it's just a simple wooden chair. If we're going to manufacture a chair, what costs are gonna go into this? Well, obviously I just talked about materials. So materials will go into our product. So let's put that on the board. Materials, and we call these raw materials or sometimes direct materials. Direct materials are significant items, materials that go into the product, okay? So we've got materials. The people that construct this chair, whatever the product might be, in our example it's a chair, their wages or their labor costs also go into the chair because we want to know the true cost of this chair. Because when we go to sell this chair, let's say the materials cost us $20. Well, we don't want to sell the chair for just maybe $25 because other costs go into it. If, someone, if somebody who put the chair together, let's say they earn $20 of wages putting this chair together, then we need to include that too. So we might have $20 of materials and $20 of labor. There's $40 right there. So we definitely wouldn't want to sell this chair for $25 because we have materials and labor of $40 right now that go into it. There's another cost that also goes into this. We call this cost the overhead. And overhead are kind of all the other miscellaneous costs besides direct materials and direct labor. So let's say we have a supervisor. Well, a supervisor's salary, he's not actually or she's not actually working on the product, but their salary still needs to go into a portion, a portion of it needs to go into this product. So we would put that in an overhead account. Same thing with the nails or maybe glue. Nobody wants to sit there and count and really measure how much glue and how many nails are going into the chair because it might vary from chair to chair and it'd be very costly to have somebody's job measuring the glue. So that glue is definitely a material but we call that an indirect material. And so the indirect materials and the indirect labor like a supervisor's salary would go into overhead. And it still gets allocated, it still goes into the product. Now, let's look at how these costs flow through our inventory system. I think you're all familiar with what inventory is. Inventory is a product that we're going to sell. Well, if we're a manufacturer, these costs, the materials that we purchase, are called raw materials, like we said. So let me put that on the board. We have our raw materials. I'm going to abbreviate that RM. Sometimes I might abbreviate it DM, because raw materials or direct materials. So what happens is we oftentimes purchase, we purchase raw materials. So it goes into a raw materials inventory account. Now, let's say it's time to start manufacturing this chair. Well, these costs don't stay in the raw materials area. Once we start manufacturing the chair, it goes into a different place. It's called work in process, which makes perfect sense. We're processing and we're working on building this chair. So we call that WIP, work in process, WIP. So what happens is this cost will get transferred out. It's two bars, transferred out. So the cost goes into work in process. So here I'm gonna add in the materials, okay? So maybe we purchased $10,000 worth of materials Maybe now we're transferring out 2,000. So if we purchased 10, we transferred out two. In this example, we'd have 8,000 left. Now, where did this 2,000 go? That's what's great about this process. We don't lose it anywhere. The 2,000 is a minus 2,000 here, so obviously a positive 2,000 here. Now, what about the people that are manufacturing this chair? Well, their labor costs, like we said before, are gonna go in to work in process. We're building this chair. So materials go into it, labor goes into it, and what else? The overhead. So we're going to add in our overhead costs. So 
and an accountant's actually going to be monitoring and tracking all of these costs as they go into this process of manufacturing our chair. At some point, the chairs are going to be finished, right? So when the chairs are finished, they can't be in work in process anymore. They have to go to finished goods. So I'm going to put that here, F, G, finished goods. The term we use for the cost that are finished is cost of goods manufactured. So we're going to subtract out the cost of goods manufactured, C-O-G-M, cost of goods manufactured, and they will move over as a positive part of finished goods, C-O-G-M, cost of goods manufactured. So now we have all these chairs accumulating in our finished goods area. What do we do with those? Well, we're going to sell them. Okay? We're going to sell these chairs. So what happens when we sell? Well, if you can remember from Accounting 111 and Accounting 230, when we sell an inventory item, that's cost of goods sold. So we're going to subtract out of here cost of goods sold. And that will go into another account, the cost of goods sold account, which is an expense. Raw materials, work in process, finished goods, these are all inventory accounts, so they are all assets. And they're inventory accounts because we're manufacturing our product that eventually we're going to sell. So once we accumulate all these costs, we can figure out what the sales price should be for this product because we'll know all the costs that go into it. Now the tricky part about this process is the overhead. And in another lecture, I will go over some of these overhead costs and how we actually put the overhead in there, which is going to be a little bit tricky. So that's why I'll put another video together for that. All right, well, good luck with the chapter. This is Exhibit 1. I've just done it a little bit easier, I hope. This is the way that I like to do it. Exhibit 1 shows the same process, but in a T-account approach. And it has manufacturing overhead, salaries, and wages. The salaries and wages is the labor, manufacturing overhead, and then I'm in the middle of Exhibit 1, and then raw materials inventory. So here's the raw materials, and then here it's going into the product. And then what happens? All these go into work in process, and they go into finished goods when we're done, so you can see all the arrows in the exhibit that are just following my uh, chart that I have up here. Okay, well, good luck with the chapter, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.